well, we've done the motive power department, carriage shop, so after much waiting, it's time for the boiler shop. Welcome to In The Loop. Uh, welcome to the boiler shop, um, Sam Robotham. Uh, we're going to have a look at some of the projects we've got on the go at the moment. First of all, boiler 799, which is for Loco 499, one of the Yuri S15s. Uh, you can see it's had a new section welded onto the smoke box tube plate. That was just to get rid of uh, a wasted area, but we decided that what was left was still uh, sort of good enough to be left behind. So that's the welding done, and the next stage on that is to get that NDT'd and then that's sort of one bit of the boiler finished. The NDT is non-destructive testing and on mild steel plate it would get uh, MPI which is a magnetic particle inspection. Uh, so moving along the boiler you can see that the new throat plate section has been trial fitted. There's a couple of bolts just holding it on the foundation ring. The next stage on that is to drill through and bolt down to the barrel uh, which will allow the flange to the barrel to be sort of trimmed to size. Um, so there's a bit more sort of fettling to go on that before it's a good fit. Once that's done, there's a, a section on the back head to, to fettle and fit. And then we'll be able to fit the new side plates, uh, which are, we've got on site ready to go, um, which is just in the, the rack over there. So while we've been looking at the plate work, the Yuri guys on the weekends have finished off drilling the remains of all the stays and you can see there's no stays left in those holes now. So those holes are now ready for reaming and tapping through once we've got all the outer plate work uh, sort of welded back on. So yeah, the guys have finished drilling all the stays out this side as well. There's just a few um, sort of stubs just to, to chuck out with the, the chisels. Um, you can see there's only a small section removed on the back head here, uh, which the new plate work is, is sort of ready to be trial fitted and, and fettled. There's quite a bit involved with that because it's not just a straight sort of plonk on. It um, has to be ground and sort of hammered to fit around the foundation ring. Um, and right at the foundation ring, it actually goes right down. You can just see on the front section, it goes down sort of right to a razor's edge, uh, right at the very top up there. Uh, and that's to allow the side sheet to sort of sit flush over it. This is the foundation ring off the boiler for 75079. It's been removed because we've, similar to the Yuri boiler, we've removed all the plate work around it. And we need to do some work on the uh, copper laps on the inner box. So while this is out, we've just started, you can see we've just started removing some of the studs and sort of ash pan pins. It's because all these are sort of quite badly wasted. So they all need, need replacing. Other than the studs and pins needing replacing, the ring's actually in pretty good condition. Uh, we'd quite often need to sort of do small weld repairs to the foundation rings, but I think this one, once it's been cleaned up, I think it's sort of ready, ready to go back in. Uh, on the bench here uh, is a little contract job we've been doing. This is a new smoke box chew plate for a small pecket boiler. Uh, you can see, as rather than being uh, pressed and flanged plate, it's been fabricated. Uh, so we made this flange uh, to suit the shape of this tube plate and it's been welded sort of both sides uh, to get that to be a nice strong uh, fit. Uh, next stage on this you can see all the tube holes and rivet holes are all marked out so the next stage is to uh, drill and ream all of those out to size. Uh, here this is uh, the boiler for uh, Talathlin number one. Uh, this is here as a little sort of uh, pet project for me and a couple of the other guys. Uh, so the Talathlin is where I originally started working on, on locos and boilers. Um, and so this is sort of me returning the favour a little bit by doing that as a volunteer project. Behind the Morn's boiler you can see Lord Nelson, uh, which is currently in here mainly for storage. Part of the agreement with the NRM is that it's sort of stored undercover. Um, and so that's why that's in here at the moment. Uh, we'll keep everyone posted on, on social media when we get updates on that. Uh, so we've just come up 
uh, the scaffolding to look into the inner firebox of Canadian Pacific spoiler. Uh, you can see most of the progress recently has been drilling all of the stay holes. At the moment these were marked out and drilled uh, and once all these are done the next stage after that is to then start reaming them through and tapping to match the um, holes in the outer wrapper uh, to start getting everything in a sort of lined up and, and into pitch. Um, you can sort of see there's a bit of a difference in the holes size wise the ones these top three rows being smaller than the ones below and that corresponds with where there's new plate on the outer wrapper so these ones will be sort of starting size stays whereas the ones below this line uh, will be opened up bigger initially because those are existing stay holes on the outer wrapper uh, so they need to go up to a bigger size initially some of the equipment we're using to do this is something like this here which is a, a mag called a mag base drill it's basically sort of what it, <laughs> it is what it, it says it's got a, a, a base magnet for a base um, which allows it to clamp onto the steel plate work and uh, and drill a hole this particular one has been very useful because it's got a, a pivoting base so we've been able to use it to match the the radius of the plate because uh, these plates they it's a very gentle radius but they do radius sort of all the way down to sort of assist the guys using it we've set up um, this jig to sort of help hold all the tools and everything this will then come in useful later on for holding the air tools that we'll use for, for uh, reaming and tapping the stay holes once all these side holes are done then there's still the crown stay holes right in the very bottom that all still need to be marked out and drilled um, along with fusible plug holes uh, so there's still we're making good progress on this one but there's still still a quite a long way to go uh, so we're back down on the shop floor now uh, next to the um, this is the boiler for standard four seven five oh seven nine uh, you can see we've cut quite a substantial amount of plate work off around the um, outer wrapper of the firebox uh, this was mainly due to uh, sort of wastage a lot of it from uh, sort of its long period of storage um, what tends to happen is water will get down between um, the frames and the size of the firebox and it kind of just ate away at the, the steel plate work and there were some quite thin areas so by cutting all that out it's just got rid of the worst of that and we're sort of back to good good metal similarly with the throat plate we didn't think we were going to need to cut quite as much off as we have. Um, but having cut off a small section at the top, we realise that what seems to have happened over the years is a lot of scale had kind of built up um, in that area, sort of tends to get washed down out of the barrel into that area, and it had kind of eaten away at the plate work from the inside. So there's quite a lot of wastage, especially around stays. Uh, so we've ended up cutting off most of the throat plate uh, thankfully avoiding the radius because sort of above that it's all quite good condition on the water side um, so having cl all, cut all the plate work off uh, the next stage which is currently ongoing is drilling out all of the the old stays as you can see looking at there where the ones that have been drilled through already and the ones that are still waiting to to be drilled through um, with this one there most of them are monol stage which is sort of quite notoriously difficult to drill um, but so far it's going quite well finally just over here in the corner of the boiler shop is um, the boiler for uh, Kilmersden a uh, small packet loco as you can see it's having similar repairs to the other boilers in here we're cutting off a skirt around the bottom of the outer wrapper again due to wastage, uh, grooving around the foundation ring. We don't anticipate there being much more to do beyond that. Uh, and as you can see, for sort of one area of plate to be cut off, there's far less stays than there is in any of these bigger boilers. So we anticipate this one being a relatively quick turnaround uh, just due to its, its size. You can see at the front, we've removed the smoke box it's probably going to end up with a new one because we found in removing the tubes we couldn't get the tubes out of the bottom row of tube holes so we think that the um 
it's had a new smoke box at some point and that the door's sort of in a slightly different place than it sort of would have been originally. So we're going to try and put that back sort of as it sort of would have been from new. But yeah, beyond that, like I say, I don't think there's much more that we're going to end up doing on this one. Um, so yeah, that's where we are. I <laughs> uh, hope you enjoyed the little look around uh, what we're doing in the boiler shop at the moment. Uh, if you want to um, keep up to date with what we're doing, we uh, try and regularly update the Ropley MBD Facebook page. Um, so check it out. And there you are, guys. From motive power to carriage shop to boilers, one end of Ropley Yard to the other. And of course, there's a lot more to this railway. From line side to buildings, there's plenty more departments that we're going to go and visit. But for the work here at Ropley, since it goes at such an exponential pace, we can't always keep up with it. Visit Ropley MPD, where the guys here post regular updates. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Sam for showing us around and we shall see you next time.